Tuesday, the Rollies grounding is finally over and just in time for Halloween. Two, I went up to his house to check out his costume. Then I have to admit, I'm a little jealous. Rollies' mom got him this night costume that's way cooler than his costume for last year. His night outfit came with a helmet and a shield and a real sword and everything. I've never had a store-bought costume before. I still haven't figured out what I'm gonna go as tomorrow night, so I'll probably just throw something together at the last minute. I figure maybe I'll bring back the toilet paper mummy again. But I think I, it's supposed to rain tomorrow night, so that might not be the smartest choice. In the past few years, the grown-ups in my neighborhood have been getting cranky about the my lame costumes, and I'm starting to think it's actually having an effect on the amount of candy I'm bringing in. What you're supposed to be? A cowboy, double baseball hat. But I don't really have time to put together a good costumes because my I'm in charge of planning out the best route for me and Rolly to take tomorrow night. This year, I'll come up with a plan that get us at least twice the candy we scared scored last year. Halloween. About an hour before we are supposed to start trick or treat, I still didn't have a costume at the point. I was seriously thinking about going as a cowboy for the second year in a row, but then Mom knocked at my door and handed me a pirate costume with my an eye patch and a hook and everything. Rolly showed up around six thirty. Wearing his night costumes, but it didn't look anything like it looked yesterday. Rolly's mom made all the safety improvements to it, and you couldn't even tell what he was supposed to be anymore. She cut out a big hole in the front of the helmet so he could see better, and covered him up in、uh, all this reflective tape. She made him wear his winter coat underneath for a, a coat underneath everything, and she replaced his sword with a glue stick. I grabbed my pillowcase, and me and Rolly started to head out. But Mum stopped us before we could get out of the door. I want you to take money with you. Man, I should have known there was a catch when Mum gave me that costume. I told Mum that there was a no way we were taking Manny with us because we were going to hit one hundred fifty two house in three hours, and plus we were going to be on Snake Road, which is way too dangerous for a little kid like Manny. I should never have mentioned that last part. Because the next thing I knew, Mum was telling Dad he had to go along with us to make sure we didn't step foot outside our neighbor. Dad tried to scream out of it, but Mum's mom makes up her mind. There's no way you can change it. Before we even got out of our own driveway, we ran into our neighbor, Mister Michelle. And his kid Jeremy, so of course they tagged along with us. Manny and Jeremy wouldn't trick or treat at any house with spooky decoration on them, so they ruled out pretty much every house on our block. Dad and Mr. Michel started talking about football or something, and every time one of them wanted to make a point, they stopped walking. Blah 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 blah. So we were hitting only about one house every twenty minutes. After a couple of hours, Dad and Mister Michel took this little kid home. 
I was glad because that meant me and Rolly could take off my pillowcase was almost empty. So I wanted to make up as much time as possible. A little while later, Rolly told me he needed a potty break. I made him hold off for another 45 minutes. But by the time we got to my grandma's house, it was pretty clear that if I didn't let Rolly use the bathroom, it was going to get messy. So I told Rolly if he wasn't back outside in one minute, I was going to start helping myself to get his candy. After that, we headed back out on the road, but but it was already 10.30, and I guess that's when most groomers decided Halloween is over. You can kind of tell because that's when they start coming to the door in their pajamas and giving you the evil eye. We decided to head home. We made a lot lot of time after that and many left. So I was pretty satisfied with how much candy we took in. When we were halfway home, this pickup truck came rolling down the street with a bunch of high school kids in it. The kid in back, the back was holding a fire extinguisher, and when the truck passed by us, he opened fire. I have to give Rolly credit because he blocked about. 95% of the water with his shoe, and if he hadn't come done that, all our candy would have gotten soaked. When the truck drove away, I yelled out something that I regretted about two seconds after. later. We are calling the cops! The driver slammed on the brakes and he turned his truck around. Me and Rolly started running. But those guys were right on our heels. The only place I could think of that was safe was Grandma's house. So we cut through a couple back wheels to get there. Grandma was in bed already, but I knew she keeps a key under the mat on her front porch. Once we got inside, I looked the looked out the window to see if those guys had followed us. And sure enough, they did. I tried to trick them into leaving, but they won't budge. Well, I guess now that we're safe in our own house, you can't get us. After a while, we realized the teenagers were going to wait us out, so we decided we were just gonna have to spend the night at grandma's. That's when we started getting cocky, making monkey noises at the teenagers and what out. Well, at least I was making monkey noise, Rolly was kind of making owl noise, but I guess it was the same general idea. Ooh, ooh, ee, ee, ah, ah, hoo, hoo. I called mom to tell her we were going to crash at grandma's for the night, but mom sounded really mad on the phone. She said it was a school night and that we had to get home right that instant. So that meant we were gonna have to make a run for it. I looked out the window, and this time I didn't see the truck. But I knew those guys were hiding somewhere and we were just trying to draw us out. So we snuck out the back door, happened out where Gran hopped over Grandma's fence, and ran all the way to Snake Road. I figured out our chances were better than because there weren't any street lights. Snake Road is scary enough on its own without having a truckload of teenagers hunting you down. Every time we saw a car coming, we dove into the bushes. It must have taken us a halfway to go 100 yards. But decided it or not, believe it or not, we made it all the way home without getting caught. Neither one of us let our guard down until we got to my driveway. But right then, there there was like this awful scream and we saw a big uh, wave of water coming towards us. Man, I forgot all about that and we totally paid the price for it. Oops, (laughs) hehe. When me and Rolly 
got inside, we laid out all our candy on the kitchen table. The only things we could salvage were a couple of mints that were wrapped in cellophane, and this toothbrush Dr. Garrison gave us. I think next Halloween, I just stay home and watch some butterfingers from the bowl of mum keeps on top of the refrigerator. The end.